we are now on the way to Yeha, located in north central Tigray, Ethiopia. Yeha was allegedly the capital of Damat, located in the area associated with the Tigray. There are two schools of thought on the origin of the temples, palaces and monumental structures of Yeha. One school considers that they were constructed by Sabian and ancient Yemenite settler colonists and are therefore of external origin. The other school of thought, a newly evolving school of historiographical significance with respect to ancient Ethiopia and ancient Eritrea, focuses on the indigenous and endogenous context of these structures. Structures such as the Temple of Yeha or the Palaces of Yeha are believed to be of total Ethiopian initiative and origin. The possibility of multi-directional and interactive influences between ancient Ethiopia, ancient Eritrea and South Arabia is not ruled out but the argument here propounded is that Ethiopian and Eritrean initiative and capabilities in the construction must be taken fully into account. There is also the suggestion that we must now reflect on the Ethiopian influence on ancient Yemen and the Sabaeans. We are going to focus, therefore, on one of the monumental legacies of this ancient era in the context of the Temple of Yeha. We are going to directly to the temple to see. Can you introduce yourself? My name is Hawaz and I'm local guide here in Yeha. Okay. We have a construction that would become the new museum here in Yeha. So this is the great temple of Yeha and this temple is under restoration by the German archaeologist in 2009. So according to them, this temple is from 8th century BC and it was for the moon and the sun temple. The original but the date we had for quite a while was 500 BC. Yeah. But now we're pushing that date earlier. Yeah. To 800 BC. Yes. 
What is the size of this temple? Yeah, it is rectangular, 15 by 18, and the maximum 14 meter high. The scaffolding is, uh, of course, as you uh, know, is yeah. intended to, um, to stabilize and uh, restoration purposes. Looking at the area that accommodated one of the 12 pillars on the floor of the Yeha Temple. I am facing the floor and we can see drainage. There's a network of drains. And the reason for that, according to my guide, is that there was a great deal of uh, ibex uh, sacrifice. It's suggested that there were about seven rooms in this building with about 12 uh, pillars. And facing us, by the way, is a very mountainous uh, terrain. It's a very huge structure. And so here we have in the forefront is a cross. Okay, we may note that uh, there's no mortar. These stones fit precisely, pretty much reminiscent of uh, Great Zimbabwe. Of course, it also means a bit of precision in terms of preparation of the stone. Yeah. And the stone is also limestone. And it is carried out far from here. We had to also transport the... Yeah, from far away. From far. Yeah. We are looking at the decorative motifs derived from the ibex. And this is very uniquely Ethiopian. We are now in an adjacent building, adjacent to the ancient temple of Yeha and a nearby church. The building that we have entered has numerous historical documents and artifacts. We are viewing some of these. These are illustrations depicting various aspects of biblical history. The focus is on the Holy Family as depicted by local Ethiopian illustrators. Note the depiction of the Christ child and Mother Mary.
In this museum, we also have illustrations. We have written documents, written in Gies and Amharic, and these documents are written on paper and also on stone, inscriptions. The inscriptions depict also spiritual matters. We have inscriptions depicting the sun. These artifacts are at least 2,600 years old. The plan that we are about to see could be much older. And of, you know, here is the number of the slab stones, you know, the slab stones is how yes. is one to another is carrying the stones in the temple yes. and the hall is this is for the gate you know for the junction of the door and also here is for the separation of the rooms you know for the sacrifice and for the purification part and also here you know the gate you know, the entrance part is here so this is actually an architectural plan yes. of the temple of the temple the great temple of Yeha. yes i am here now in the small church museum of Yeha. Mm -hmm. It is the smallest museum in the world here. And your name? <laughs> My name is Hawaz. The church in our view is relatively more recent. It dates to the 6th century AD. Therefore, we are really looking at a church that is about 1500 years old. I'm told though that there were some repairs in 1914. We note the scaffold then for decorative purposes uh, largely, but this would uh, no doubt also facilitate repairs. The scaffolding is not as pronounced as the Malian mosque. And here I'm thinking about the Dingaremba mosque with a great deal of projections. But it definitely has the same function of facilitating painting and restoration etc but more importantly it is really uh, decorative let us note that the temple of Yeha is twice as old as the church remember it goes back to about 800 BC and so the temple of Yeha is actually about 2800 years so we are now on another site in Yeha, not too far from the temple, yeah. and um, this is a recent Excursion. finding. How old is it? 10th century BC, older than the temple. It's older than the temple. Yeah. How did they know that? Because of dating method. Okay, they found yeah. charcoal. Charcoal from 8th century BC. Makeda's temple is now 10th, 10th century. Yeah, so in other words, it really... Uh, would match yeah. the, the, the time frame. Yeah, the time frame. Yes. So was this a temple also? 
It's a palace. Of okay, it was a palace. So you have the palace yeah. and then you have the temple. Yes. Now this was uh, Ethiopian in origin okay. and definitely true enough you might have one or two uh, migrants but I think it's uh, erroneous to argue that the civilization was uh, derived from external sources. We are now challenging that theory and we are now arguing that this was the center of the civilization and that Yemen and Saba etc would be at the periphery. How many rooms are there in this construction? It is many, many rooms. You like see. how many? Uh, Let's get over there in the temple. We said there were about more seven than, or eight. Uh, seven, right? eight, yeah. F from here is around of 20, more than 20. 20 rooms? Yeah. Okay, in the palace. Yeah, we're expecting more. Uh, excavated and found some slag, what seems to be slag. What else did they find? Uh, so different parts of different shapes of ceramic spotters you can find here. Not displayed in the museum because as we seen our museum is very small. Okay. Yeah. This would date to probably date five six five six. Most the century, of the five six older dates. Older are, dates yeah. than this. So it's, this it's behind for all you know this is probably an extension later on. We don't know. Yeah, it's. We are looking at the latest excavation in Yeha <clears throat> of a palace. Yes. Now, the dates for this, there are different dates also suggesting probably continuous occupation. Yes. Now, um, this latest excavation also yielded pots, ceramics. Ceramics from 5th, 6th century BC. Okay. We have been looking at an elite structure that some analysts believe may have been a palace. More rooms are expected, but so far 20 have been discovered. The structure, the elite structure, is very close to the temple of Yeha. Although the dates are not identical, the palace is older. In a future production, we hope to explore issues arising from a conflict between the archaeological team and the former occupants of the premises.